Hey guys, Chris Olka here, and today's video is one that's been a long time coming. I've been waiting a long time to collect my thoughts about the subject because it tends to be very controversial, but I've been asked to speak about this topic by so many players that I think it's better to go ahead and start somewhere. This will be the first video I've recorded about the shifted low register embouchure, but I'm sure that it won't be the last. Because I'm trying to keep the video under 25 minutes in duration, I'll be using a script, so please bear with me. First, what is the shift? Simply put, it's the placement of the mouthpiece rim on certain parts of the embouchure to favor the vibration of either the top or bottom lip over the other in the mouthpiece cup. Depending on which lip you are favoring in the cup, the tone color, response, control, and efficiency of vibration will be affected based on this placement. This can vary widely depending on the player, mouthpiece, an instrument being played, as well as the amount of skill developed through the practice of this technique. Some players develop this skill without conscious focus on the technique, rather letting their ear and intuition guide their development and use of the shift. To these players, it's just the way they've learned to play. Most other players are vaguely familiar with the idea of the shift, but either avoid using it because someone has told them it's a bad habit or cheating, or for lack of any clear guidance on how to go about learning it. Finally, a few players have intentionally spent time thinking about and practicing the shift and developed it into a very useful tool as part of an overall well-balanced foundation of playing. This embouchure is not unique to the tuba as it can be observed in wide use throughout the entire family of brass instruments at a very high level worldwide. So how does the shift work? The simplified explanation is that because our top and bottom lips usually tend to be comprised of slightly different types of tissue and musculature, 
When the player favors one lip to vibrate more in the cup than the other, tone will be affected according to which lip is being favored. Generally speaking, when the rim is moved up towards the nose, this exposes more surface of the top lip in the cup for vibration. When moved down towards the chin, this exposes more bottom lip in the cup. At this point, let's make a few general observations about our lips. For most people, their top lip tends to be a bit thinner, more muscular, and comprised of more white tissue. The bottom lip, in contrast, is usually meatier, flabbier, and is made up of more red tissue. These differences can be used to our advantage depending on how we want to influence the sound and response when playing. When observing the differences in tone between favoring either lip, a few more generalizations can be made. The sound when favoring the top lip tends towards a brighter, sometimes thinner tone with very quick response to the airstream. The use of the bottom lip produces a darker, thicker sound and is conducive to very wide, slow, and low vibrations. It can be very responsive so long as it's not subjected to heavy resistance such as is encountered when playing with long valve combinations. A string instrument analogy for describing the difference between the top and bottom lip might go as follows. The top lip is like a steel core modern string that responds quickly and produces a brilliant, clear, and projecting sound. The bottom lip is like an old-fashioned gut string that is less responsive and projecting and makes a darker, warmer tone. How does a player go about learning the shift? Thoughtful experimentation along with a methodical practice routine in balance with all other aspects of brass playing. It shouldn't become a singular focus in a player's daily practice regimen at the expense of other areas such as high playing, articulation, flexibility, etc. Spend a few minutes a day trying different mouthpiece placements on your embouchure and on many different notes. You'll most likely find a combination of a particular spot and note that really benefits from this experimentation and produces a clearer tone and faster response. When you find this sweet spot, try slowly expanding it both higher and lower in your range. At first, it may prove quite difficult, but keep trying and don't forget to incorporate the two most important aspects of good brass playing, pre-hearing of the note you're trying to play in your head and a steady supported airstream to fuel your embouchure. While most of your foundation for playing should take the focus away from how the mouthpiece feels on your lips, this is one area where I'll make an exception.
Once you've managed to carve out a few notes in the shift, start forcing yourself to develop an overlap between your shifted and regular embouchures. Moist lips and the use of a wet embouchure really help with this. Early on, players feel like they are locked into a particular setting and cannot easily get in and out of it. This is the time to really start monitoring mouthpiece pressure and avoid using too much. Also commit to always using a supported airstream when practicing this. The more overlap you can develop between your various embouchures, the more useful the shift becomes because you have more choices about when and how to use it. Now, on to some common misconceptions about the shift. Number one, it's only for extremely loud playing. While most players arrive at this conclusion because it's generally easier to learn and hear the differences between your regular and shifted embouchures while playing loud, where it really shines is in soft, controlled, low register playing. The flaccid nature of most players' chops when playing low tends to make soft entrances especially difficult. This stems from their loose corners, which in turn create stiff lips. The shift forces the player to engage firm corners and thus create supple, vibrating surfaces of the lips. Misconception number two, it's a bad habit and cheating. I've never endorsed players neglecting the development of their regular embouchure in favor of the shift. It is simply another tool you can develop as part of a well-balanced and complete foundation to your playing. Options are always a good thing when facing the many playing challenges encountered throughout a career. As to the idea that it's cheating somehow, who cares as long as it sounds good?
Misconception number three. Some really fine players and teachers appear to be able to play from the highest to lowest notes on their instruments without any apparent movement of the mouthpiece. The key here is to realize that you're not able to actually see what's going on inside the mouthpiece. My experience with using clear mouthpieces and slow stop motion video has shown me that when taking two players of equal ability where one plays with a shift and the other doesn't, What's actually going on inside the cup is practically the same. The important differences lie between the two players' individual embouchure tissue and equipment choices. One player may have certain physical characteristics that lend themselves to the outward appearance of immobility while playing compared to a player that seems to move a lot. However, when viewed through the clear mouthpiece, the tissue inside the cup that's doing the vibration tends to be the same for both players. As long as they both sound good, what does it matter who moves more or less? A teacher that forces a student to minimize or completely avoid mouthpiece movement while playing may be keeping that student from ever realizing their maximum potential as a player. The journey I embarked on to develop my shifted embouchure began long ago and with the support of my teacher, Warren Deck. It is still a work in progress, but has provided many benefits to my playing and been well worth the effort. It will never be a substitute for a complete and well-balanced foundation, but instead is just one more tool to use in your music-making arsenal. I hope this video helps.